Cool, I'm joined by Gillian Balague. I've not killed your name, have I? No, no, you said it perfectly. <laughs> by the way, Orange, thank you very much for being part of the other stuff yeah, we're yeah. doing up till now, the documentary for CBS, so cheers. Yeah, I've been a massive fan for, for a long time, and even when you were talking on Sky about Guardiola back in 2009, 10, that kind of period of time, I just, I'm very keen to see what you think about Guardiola's legacy at Man City. We've arrived at the second Champions League final. For me, it feels like the first real final, because it was kind of COVID, that one in Porto. Just as, a, a, as an overview, what is Pep doing with the City side at the moment? Oof, so much. Uh, taking football to another level. Uh, quite clearly, he's working on the different faces of attack and defence, but especially in attack, what he's doing is new. Started with the exit part of the, of the, of the, of the build-up with Barcelona. I feel with Bayern started working on the, what is called the construction, when the ball gets into the halfway line. And there's two still phases. One is the one before the last pass, and he's working so much at it at, uh, at City. Players between the lines, the movements on both sides of the pitch with three or four players sometimes. And, uh, and he's leading that. And as a consequence, there's many other managers that are copying it. And, uh, and I, was, uh, I was making a list of the, uh, of the managers that are pupils of Pep Guardiola in the Premier League. And, and his companion, Vincent Compagni, who came up with Burnley, Thomas Frank, uh, Marco Silva, Mikel Arteta, Ten Hag. So we are, we are witnessing an artist apply, but not just any artist, one that is breaking them all. And, and he's, from that point of view, very pleasing to see. Will he be worried about, on, on a selfish level, will he be worried about the loss to Chelsea, a dent in his record, his perfect record in Champions League final history? Will he be worried about another loss, what that does to his kind of his perception in football, will he be caring about that? Is he too confident about winning this game? You must have heard him a hundred times say, look, sport is about winning and losing. Nothing is guaranteed. Your favourites? Clearly. Uh, are you playing the best football I've seen? Not a doubt. Uh, have you got enough solutions for whatever Inter brings? Of course. But it's a final, anything can happen. So he's not thinking, I need to win because my CV or because of the books or because of the history. No, he already has changed football. That is in itself quite an ambitious um, prospect. And, and again, no, it's not that he thinks that, but that's the conclusion of people within the industry. Winning finishes debates. Yeah. And of course, allows you to win the championship for the first time. That's the aim anyway, one of the aims. Yeah. The other one is to dominate uh, domestically, which you are doing already, of course. Yeah. So he was asked that, and he was asked to be uh, top four in Europe semi-finals regularly. That is also happening too. Yeah. The next step, it depends on so many things, on the players, on the tactics, on the referee, on the weather. On... Yeah. But personally, I hope it happens and I hope you win, because as I said, it just it will kill uh, a lot of debates. I want to get your take on this. The last Champions League final is something I've not, I've not actually had a good night's sleep since. We go in, Fernandinho in, in great form. Rodri, maybe a little bit young, a little bit maybe inexperienced for the Champions League final. Both of them don't start against Chelsea. For me, my only perception of it was Ilkay Gundogan gets the ball. He's a, bit, he's a bit more adventurous with his passing through the lines. He gets it first time, tries to break through that Chelsea midfield. It's very flat, very deep. What's your perception on, on how he overthought that? For me, it's one of the biggest missteps maybe in his managerial career, that, that kind of no defensive midfielder situation. A few things about that. What was the score? 1-0. 1 0. Yeah. So Chelsea only scored one more goal than Manchester yeah. City. You're not talking in hindsight, are you? Or maybe <laughs> are you? No, at the time, you can see my Twitter. At the time, I couldn't believe what was happening. Uh, when he takes decisions like that, and I, let me not forget to talk, touch on the other thinking. When he takes decisions like that, it's because there are problems that he wants to solve. Problems that you and me don't know. And we have to ask at some point and see what were the problems that he's trying to solve. But it didn't work out, and as he would say, it didn't work out, we lost, I wasn't right. If I won, I will be right. But it's such a fine line in football. The margins are so little. What was he thinking then? What is your initial reaction when you saw that? So I'd, I'd not seen him do that for Barcelona against Man United in, at Wembley. Against, he changed things. Him in Rome. He changed things. But, but that, the pivotal way of and moving the ball through midfield. Well. What, what, what was the idea behind it? I, just, I, don't, I, don't I would love it. to sit down with him and instead of getting my theory of it, to hear what he has to say. And when he does, I'll, I'll share it with you. Overthinking. Overthinking, whoever uses that word and you have. All right, except you. <laughs> do not understand what he's doing. Yeah. Overthinking is a lazy description of somebody that would like him to stay 
in the phase one of his thinking. Can he just not just do what he did at Barcelona and that's it? No, because what he does is think all the time. Think ways of avoiding the other teams stopping them and think ways to attack them. And he will think and think and think and how he sleeps because of it. And he will go to Wembley, changing room, and he will, having prepared the whole week to what was going to happen and the tactics and having spoken to the players and the three, four minutes that he has before every, every game, all that was in place. And then he goes, Kanji, Bruno Fernandes is going to come inside. Kanji's going to have a channel. Guys, you have to give the ball to Kanji. Kanji, just go. And because he thinks, he gets to a place where he is now, which is a unique place that we've never seen before. So, you know, with the overthinking, as I say, you will not always get it right because, surprise, surprise, football is not a straight line. Of course, of course. Winning depends on so many things. How does he change, sorry, how does he change from Man United then, going into Inter Milan? What, what's the big, are there big changes? Does he keep, the same, for me as a City fan, I think you just keep the same lineup. That's what I do. And he will do that because, I think he will, because he's actually the calmest I've ever seen him before a final. He knows he's got it all right, he's all sorted. He's happy with the two defensive uh, centre-backs, really, as as full-backs, if that's yeah, how Walker's not playing. Uh, he's happy with the role of everyone at play, how Haaland uses the ball, how makes his runs, how Bernardo Silva, ev everything seems to be working. So there's no, no need to change. But the FA final showed that the team still has got difficulties if, if they, they get really well defended on the edge of the box. Yeah. And United did that. Inter will do that better and do not need the ball. So having all that in mind, the word of the week has been patience. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Make the mistake, but keep going. You know what you have to do. Do not lose confidence. Keep going. And yeah, it'll be tight, but I think that will just take you to the win. Very finally, then, how does the game pan out roughly? Do you think it's uh, we breeze past Inter Milan? Oh, no, not to be cocky, of course, Inter Milan can score first, make it ugly, five at the back. But if we play our way, which is crazy for me to say as a City fan, I think we've got the chance of blowing them away. Why didn't it happen against United? Uh, well, I mean, the referee had a big decision, you know, had a big role to play in that. Maybe scoring early actually kind of deflated so us a little bit. Things that could happen. The referee could also take a decision and, yeah, yeah. and equal things up. It did not happen because United defended very well. So it wasn't just that you couldn't blow them away. They defended very well and Inter I thought I did the same. Which means that, would, in my eyes, it would be the kind of game that uh, after the last 10 minutes it would be very tight, maybe one goal difference. And then if Inter feel like it's time to attack, perhaps you take advantage of it because now you can attack in different ways. But much tighter, I think, than most people think. But a win? Oh, yeah. Come on, win it. Win it. Thank you very much, man. Right, we appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Well, I got a shout out Gillen Balagay for joining me on the channel. Also, I will be covering the game uh, by myself, previewing what is one of the biggest games uh, in the club's history. Uh, obviously, the video went slightly out of focus, so if you've watched so far, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, obviously, make sure you subscribe. I will be doing an immediate post-match reaction. Very, very worried, very, very nervous. Very keen to what you think in the comments down below. But, um, yeah, really great video with Gillian Balague, a, a guy that I've massively respected for so long in the space. Uh, and he's very, very confident um, about Man City, about Pep Guardiola. That makes one of us. Hopefully, no uh, crazy, no defensive midfielder situations for City. And I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, very keen to see what you think in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. See you soon.